So excited to be here having this conversation presented by Bose with two absolute legends. We've got Kid Cudi and Joe Burrow. So many interesting things to discuss, but is this the first time you all have seen each other since the Super Bowl? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a really beautiful moment. You're, you're reunited. I mean, your friendship is super special, so I'm interested in some of the firsts. Tell me the first time you heard Kid Cudi's music, Joe. That would have been sixth grade. Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> sixth grade, you made my me friend. Feel so old. <laughs> <laughs> my friend Marcus came up to me. He was like, "Yo, you gotta show. I gotta show you this dude's music, Kid Cootie." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we started listening to it, and from then on, I was hooked. Kid Cootie. Yeah, yeah. That? I got that a lot. Yeah. Early on. Yeah. yeah. All right. So for you, Cuddy, do you remember the first time you saw Joe play? Yeah, I don't really watch much sports. And, but when I had found out that Joe had got drafted, uh, I did like a congratulations video. And like, I kind of always like would be on Twitter and go in the sports section and look at updates and check on them and see things and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. When they were playing the Chiefs, like that day, I was like, you know what? Like, this is a really important game. Let me like, just like, stop everything, let me just sit in my house and just like watch a full game of football, you know? <laughs> and, and, and I was like, and I'm invested in this because it's somebody I, I know, you know? So it's like, the, for the first time I've, I've ever had that, you know? I've never like, you know, had like a friend play on a team where I'm like, you know, like, oh, I gotta root for them, you know? Yeah. So it was really exciting and, and they ended up winning and I felt like I was good luck. Uh, so, <laughs> but it, that was the first time, man. It was like just seeing, how incredible of an athlete he is, you know? Um, you know, it just made a lot of sense why he's in the place he is right now. Absolutely, and I think you got a, a pretty cool token uh, of that game. Wanna yeah. tell me that story, Joe? He hit me up after the game. He's like, let me get the jersey. I said, first thing I did, went to our EQ guys. Hey, you gotta send it to him right now. Make sure he gets it this week. Yeah, no, that yeah. is absolutely legendary. Yeah, I got it like that. days later. <laughs> and I mean, that's iconic. Yeah, you know that, right? stains, dirt. Like, I still haven't framed it because I'm like torn between like, do I wear it again? Yeah. Or, because once it's in the frame, man, it's in the frame forever, so. Yeah, oh, I love hearing that. So. At its base, why do you think you all were able to connect, you know, on a friendship level? Man, I think it's the Midwestern Ohio boy qualities, you know? Yep. Also, like, me and my fans have a connection through the music in a way that most artists don't have. You know, they feel like there's that honest big brother, little brother connection, and, and, and I've been kind of like a, a voice of guidance in their life in some way. Yeah. And they've been helping me as well along the way. Mm -hmm. You know, um, seeing Joe um, be awesome in his world and then know that like my music is something that inspired him and helped him on the way on his journey is super humbling and, and just blows my mind, you know, because it's just a testament to like what I wanted to do from the very first album. You know, I just wanted to like touch people and help them in their lives and, and make people not feel alone. And it's just nice to see that like 14 years later, like something I, I put into the world 14 years ago has yeah. like infected someone and, and helped them in their world, yeah. you know? I love that because like it's a tangible thing. Yeah. You're like this is something I see like the effect that I've had. And yeah. I think that's what's really beautiful about you all's friendship is music brought you together. So Joe, what has been the power of music in your life? Well, with Scott's music, I feel like I've known you since sixth grade. Yeah. Because I've been listening to it for that long and there's so much emotion in it. I feel like every time I listen to it, I'm having a conversation with him. I've having these conversations since I was, you know, 12 years old. And so when we connected finally, it was like, long lost brothers to me at least, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was and, easy, we hit it off. Yeah, and when you're growing up from 12 to 18, you're going through this trying to find yourself phase and you know, listening to the music that you make helped me you know, find myself and get me through. Everyone has hard times when they're growing up, you know, they're trying to find themselves, it's, it's tough. You know, going through that with your music help. And I know obviously you guys are really good friends now, but knowing that and knowing the impact that he did have in your life, you meet him, what's going through your head? 
<laughs> Put him on the spot here. <laughs> He's probably like, please don't be a dick. <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit. Of that. Like, I meet him like, Phew. he was cool, nice, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. No, I love that. That's how I felt when I first met Snoop Dogg. You know? It's kind of like you know certain people are just gonna, like the coolest motherfuckers. Yeah. And you meet Snoop yeah. and it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. I see it all. I mean, so you touched on this a bit, but have you really ever sat back and thought about just the impact that your music has had on people as they fulfill their dreams? Because Joe, like we said, is a direct manifestation of that. I think for a lot of my career, I didn't. And uh, I'd say in the past five years, I've, I've kind of had that moment where I've taken a step back and been, been able to look at everything I've accomplished and and what we've done in hip hop and, and the fact that me and you know my partners, whether it's Dr. Genius or Plain Pat or Mill, we created something really special years ago that we knew was gonna infect the world in some way. We didn't know how, but we knew that it was gonna have some type of effect. And it's still just like, it blows my mind to just to just be here and I keep quoting this 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 number 14 years because my my mixtape uh, a kid named Cuddy comes out and it's been uh, 14 years since that came out I never thought my career would go this long you know I kind of only dreamed like past like my first two albums and then like everything else is just like bonus mm -hmm. you know so to be here where I'm at right now um, 38 years old you know when when I was doing the albums that Joe heard, I was 24 years old. So like, we've just come a long way and, and it's a beautiful thing to see it all kind of like manifest and be yeah. like, you know. It's like, this is how I wish the world would have been when in 2009 when I was creating music. I was just hoping that we could get to that place, yeah. you know. What do you feel like that's a testament to? I don't know, I think it's a testament to, it's a lot of my Ohio qualities. You know, just like being a good person and having some good values and stuff. And, you know, because that's truly what Kid Cudi is about. Like, you know, like that's why I said, like, Joe's first fear was like, oh, don't be a dick. Because, like, <laughs> it's really important that people understand that, like, you know, I, for a long time, it took me, it took me a minute to even get to that place of being confident to say I'm a role model. And like, if me and Joe, I wouldn't have been able to face Joe, say, eight years ago. Like, I would have saw that he liked my music and I would have been too like, um, I'm not where I want to be yet. I'm, I feel like I'm a failure. I'm, I'm secretly dealing with things and I, I feel like a fraud. I wouldn't want to face him, yeah. you know? Everything happens for a reason because now it's like I can meet Joe and I'm in, in the best place in my life. And, you know, I can have this relationship with him where you know, if he needs advice or he needs some help, you know, I can be there for him, mm -hmm. you know? So like, uh, it took me a while to get here, but we're here. Yeah, no, I love that. I'm so happy you're there. I'm so happy you feel, you feel that you're there and yeah. that, you know, you guys have this friendship where, where you have each other. You know, Joe, a, a moment I think everybody loved was uh, yeah, after the Super Bowl, you guys were together. Everybody loved seeing that. And correct me if I'm wrong, do you feel like that moment, being able to have music, have your friend with you, was able to help you after that? Yeah, when I, I mean, when we met up, you know, I was pretty down in the dumps. And I get into his car and he's all upbeat and he's like, great game, great game. And I was like, no, no, no. He's like, no, we got to celebrate this. And so, you know, then in my head, I'm like, you know, we did something very cool. We get to this point. It didn't work out the way we wanted to, but I want to celebrate what we did. Yeah. And so I was able to be with him, be with friends, be with teammates and we were able to, to celebrate what we did throughout the year, even though it didn't end the way we wanted to. And how did music help you in that moment? You know, I made the, helped me make the, the set list for, for his show. And so <laughs> I got to listen to all the songs I grew up listening to that helped me through those formative years that, you know, just kind of brought me back and I was able to, to have some fun that night. I wanted to do like the songs that he wanted to hear, you know? Mm -hmm. like, I love his favorite joints. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, lastly, you know, Joe has talked a lot about the formative years growing up on you and what that meant. What do you think, you know, you, his, his childhood music idol, would have said to high school Joe Burrow about chasing after what he wants? I did say I, I, I 
don't watch much sports, but I know an athlete's road to greatness is not easy. So one thing I would say is, I would say, it's gonna get hard, it's gonna get tough, and you're gonna feel like you can't make it. But those are the moments that are gonna show you if you're really built for what you're dreaming for, you know? If you're really made for that next level, you know? And if you're hungry enough, if you want it enough, if you're really gonna put in the work, you can get there, you know? Cause that's what I did for music. You know, I just wanted it bad enough. I put in the work, I put in the hours, you know? The same way an athlete would go to the gym, I went to the studio and I was in there working on my craft, mm -hmm. you know? And I dedicated my life to this. And, and that's what you see. It's like excellence is the key. Yeah. You know, you want to be the best. And that's something that my, my, my eighth grade English teacher always used to say is be the best, Mr. Hutch. That was his, his favorite thing to say, you know? And I always used to listen to him like, man, like that's so like in intense, like be the best, like having to be number one all the time. But like, no, like go for excellence every time. Every time. Yeah. And what would high school, what would high school Joe say to Cuddy about what he meant at that time in your life? I mean, I think just like everybody, I went through some, some dark times growing up where you doubt yourself in a lot of different areas of life. I mean, when you're 16, you don't know who you're gonna be, who you are, or anything. And, you know, he just, his music, whether he meant to or not, helped me find who I am today and who I evolved into. And, you know, just went along for the journey and, and helped me get to where I am. Beautiful. A friendship truly built by the power of music. I yeah. love it. Everybody's favorite friends, Kid Cudi <laughs> and Joe Burrow. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs>